want you to share with the congregation, whatever, whatever the Holy Spirit puts on here. I just want you to just let the Holy Spirit just flow over you. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is saying to us as a, as a body of Christ, just begin to magnify him. Just begin to lift your voice up and praise. Lift your voice up and worship. Lift your voice and talk it. Hallelujah. It's worthy. It's yes. worthy. Yes. It is worthy. Yes. It is worthy to yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord God. Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit yes. comes, He wants us to respond. Yes. He wants us to respond to Him. That's Whether right. we're here, That's right. whether we're at home, whether we're on our job, whether we're riding in our car, there is a response that He wants you to give Him. Yes. In this hour, right. because the world is yes. giving the enemy a response. Yes. They're responding to Him. So how much more must we respond yeah. to our Lord and Savior? Yeah. There is none beside him. There's nobody beside him. There is nobody higher than him. There is nobody right there. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, we have been worshiping so in our home. Because my husband has been so ill. And God began to say, come as Moses did to the tent of meeting. When he saw all the garbage and all the idols and all the things that was going on on the outside, Moses just looked at him and he said, I can't stay here. I've got to step into Oh, the tent of yes, meeting yes, yes, where the very yes, literal presence yes, of God yes, 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 and that's what we've been doing every morning yes, we've been saying Lord we're going to step into the tent of meeting yes, we're going to quiet all the noise around us yes, we're going to quiet all the sickness yes, all the disease yes, all everything that's outside Everything that we're hearing on the news, everything that we're hearing from others, we're just going to quiet ourselves. Uh, this is a time to quiet ourselves in His presence. And every morning when we do that, God speaks. He speaks. Try it. He will speak as you sit there and you read His Word and we have His worship on us. And the Holy Spirit just begins to speak. And in these months that we've been doing this, yeah. I noticed that my tongues are changing. <laughs> my tongues are changing. It was like, okay, where did that come from? <laughs> uh, where did that come from? You know, but in worship. Yeah. Just begin to learn how to yeah. worship. That's what I feel that the Holy Spirit is saying. Right. Brother Dave has been talking about know your yeah. God. Yeah. Know your God. Know what he's able to do. Know what he can do. Get to know your God. When you, I'm finding out the more I know my God, yes. the more yes. I receive from yes. him. Yes. I begin to enter into a realm that I'm not even familiar with. Yes. So just begin to know your God. And go into the tent of me. Oh, read that scripture. How yes. Moses went into the tent of me, yes. and when he came out, nothing had changed. <laughs> nothing had changed out there. It's good. But Moses had to go. <laughs> they anointed him. <laughs> he had everything <laughs> to deal with what was out there. Yes. Just go in, say it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Turn your mind to this book of Matthew. Montanyami. Matthew was originally written in Hebrew and then it was translated in Greek. They actually have the Hebrew translations in museums. So you can actually go to a museum and get the uh, manuscript uh, of the, the Hebrew. And it's arguable 
that all the rest of them are also written in Hebrew verse too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't want to go that far, at least go this way with me. Every one of the books, including the book of Luke, because Luke is not a Gentile believer. Luke was a, Luke was a, uh, was a, uh, was a Jewish person. Yes, he was. We've been, we've been, we've been mis, miscommunicated about that, all right? But even if it was originally written in Greek, which I don't believe it was, but let's say that originally it was. The writers were Hebrew. Every writer was a Jewish writer from the tribe, either from the tribe of Judah or from the tribe of Levi or from the tribe of, uh, 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 I think, I think there was some, uh, some other tribe in there. I can't remember what it was. Benjamin. Benjamin. That's right. Benjamin. What chapter are you going to? That was the southern kingdom, right? That was it. And then, Get a little lot of biblical history here before we get in here. The southern kingdom was was Judea. That's where we get the term Jew from. Mm. From the land of Judea. It was called Judea because the land because Judah was the primary tribe that was in the southern southern part. You had the uh, they had the uh, Judahites, you had the Benjamites, and you had the uh, the Le Levites. Then the northern kingdom Another kingdom that was the other ten tribes. Zebulun, Asher, all these other ones, all right? They went into Assyrian captivity and they were scattered throughout the entire world. They are considered in biblical terms as Ephraim. Mm -hmm. There's a prophecy that says that the stick of Ephraim, the northern kingdom, and the stick of Judah, will be joined together into one stick. Now we saw that fulfilled when Yeshua was crucified. Jews and Gentiles came as one. The, 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 the temple veil was ripped from top to bottom, signifying that anyone could enter into the Holy Holies. They tried to sew it up. They didn't do a very good job of it, but they tried. And then what happened is that the the Jewish uh, uh, the Jewish people after the destruction of the temple in seventy A.D. they had to have they, they had to, they had to reinvent their whole religion mm -hmm. because they no longer could do the sacrifices they no longer had a purpose for the priesthood so the priesthood just basically just fizzled out. There's no purpose for the high priest, so he basically lost his authority. Without the temple, the high priest had no authority. Mm -hmm. And so the rabbis then, the rabbis who were established back in the Babylonian captivity, with the establishment of the synagogues, then they began to have rabbis that began to teach in the synagogues in, in Babylon. That's how the synagogues began to, uh, came about. That's, that was the original part of the synagogue. So if you see a Jewish synagogue, you know that it was originally birthed in Babylon. That's interesting. And so the so they 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 so the rabbis then grabbed a hold of the reins of the leadership. And one particular rabbi, Rabbi Akiva, and several other rabbis met in Jaffna, and uh, and and in Jaffna they 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 uh, they they began to re re redo Judaism. But when they did, they erected this huge wall between them and these two believers that were coming to faith in Yeshua, Jesus Christ. They were they were they erected this wall before between them. They did several things and one they they even changed one of the dates on the calendar so that the so that they uh, that it would confuse people about the the resurrection because they changed the date. So one of, the, one of their holidays is actually uh, on the wrong day, according to Scripture. <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? <laughs> All right. So, so they, they erected the wall. Then, then they came along, they came along, Constantine, and he established a one-world church. <laughs> he married the church in the state. Yes, he did. And then what they what he did is he, he introduced a lot of paganism into the, the, the doctrine of the apostles. Mm -hmm. 
And over a period of time, this just kept on going, it kept on going, it kept on going. The Roman Catholic Church was birthed out of that. You had always seen that, that uh, formulated the doctrines of the Roman Catholic Church. And the Roman Catholic Church ruled the world. There were, there, were, there were underground churches at the time. There were underground believers at the time all the way through. All right? But primarily and, and mostly it was, it was overtaken by the Roman Catholic Church. <laughs> So, th this continued on with a lot of different things being introduced into the doctrines of the church. They began to establish, they began to establish uh, traditions <laughs> that replaced the Word of God. They stopped celebrating the Feast of, of Yahweh, the Feast of the Lord. Because, and they started calling them Jewish feasts. Mm -hmm. Separating themselves from Jew the Jewish section because the new believers were being taught by who? Jews. They were being taught by the apostles. Every one of them, Jewish people. <laughs> they, they, they broke bread and were taught the apostles' doctrine. <laughs> We don't. We're not taught the apostles' doctrine anymore. You know what we're taught? We're taught. We're taught the the, the doctrine of the church fathers. Thank you. The Nicene Creed drove the nail, yes. and it just literally. So they had a wall already up. Now we come along with the Anton the Nicene Creed in there, and now now we got a double wall. Thank God. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, there's a lot of that wall come down. Oh yeah. Amen. 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 <laughs> in all of us. He wants the two sticks to be together. Mm, yes. Ephraim and Judah need to come together. Yes. Now, skip. They performed that ceremony. Isaac Rabin was Prime Minister in Israel in 1999. And on Yom Kippur, he went up onto the Temple Mount and he put the stick of Judah with the stick of Ephraim. Mm -hmm. He performed the sacrifice. It started the second Intifada mm -hmm. against Isn't that Israel, interesting? against Israel. And then you see, see a bit of bit of bit of secular history yeah. that ties in with biblical history. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Thank you, Skip. So I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. All that's free. That had nothing to do with the lesson today. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Matthew chapter 6. We're going to start in verse 9. Now, one other, one other uh, writer gives us a little bit of an introduction to this, and they, the, where the disciples had asked Jesus how to, to teach us to pray. I find it interesting that when the disciples came to ask Jesus to teach them something, they didn't say, teach me how to preach. They didn't say, teach me how to lead worship. They didn't say, teach me how to do my business better. Teach me to be a better Christian man. They didn't say, teach me how to be a better tax collector. <laughs> okay? Yeah. They said, teach us to pray. There was something different about Jesus' prayers that made them want to have that kind of prayer life. I like what, she, what our sister shared with us this morning about getting into the presence of the Lord. Because prayer and worship go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. You see, prayer is just talking to God. We we have over we have over complicated prayer. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We think we have to get into our little corner, our little little place, and get everything laid out just right. 
And then close yourself off and, and, and pray. It's interesting when Jesus told his disciples, he said, when you go, go when you pray, go into your closet, right? Yeah. And pray in secret. Now, let me, let me educate you here. They were not living in a Western right. society. Thank you. See, what we do is we read the English words and we, we, we put English translations on the words and then we try to we try to follow that and we try to go into an English and so we all build our little prayer closet. There was even a film, a movie made about the prayer closet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. But let me assure you they had no closets. <laughs> they lived in a three-room home, most of them did. One room was for the animals, one room was for, for their bedding, and the other room was for the living quarters and also to eat. A three-room house, that's all they had. There was no closets. So what do you mean, go into your closet? This was their closet. <laughs> they would put their Tali over their heads. Yes, what we do. They would close off the yeah. front of it. Yes, Lord. And they went into the secret place. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. And the one who saw in the secret place yes. God. would reward them all. They went into their holy of holies. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. They personal Holy of Holies. Mm. That they could go in behind the veil and shut the veil behind them. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. There is something powerful about the prayer shawl and doing that. Yes. There's something powerful when you understand that you are literally going into your personal Holy of Holies yes. where you and God alone can share divine secrets with each other. Huh? You can tell him the secrets of your heart, the secrets of your soul. You can get intimate with him yes. like you can get here with nobody else. Yes. In fact, you know, you know that marriage is, is, is supposed to teach us about that? What is the holiest place in your, in your home? In your the bedroom. Yes, it is. And I want to tell you, your children understand that from the time that they're just little. They don't, they don't they don't. They knock on the door because that's a separate room right. for their mommy and their daddy. And mommy and daddy share secrets in that room, and they share intimate relationships with them. With them. that's what that, that's what that's supposed to teach us is how to get into the secret place with the Most High and to share our secrets with Him and to have openness and honesty before Him. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And to lose all our inhibitions before him. If we feel like dancing, we dance before him. If we feel like singing, we sing before him. If we feel like shouting, we shout. If we feel like whispering, we whisper. Yes. If we feel like crying, we cry. If we feel like laughing, we laugh. We can just be ourselves. Hallelujah. We can let down all the outward facades. Because he knows us anyway. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's what entering into the closet is all about. Hallelujah. And sharing that intimate time with him. Oh, Jesus. Where you can feel his presence. So rich and so powerful and so strong. That it's as, as if he's right there with you. That's the presence of God. <coughs> I appreciated what she shared. So in verse 9 it says, After this manner, pray you. Our Father. In Hebrew that's Avinu. 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 Our Father. Our Father. Which is in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. The word hallowed 
comes from the word kadosh. Kadosh, kadosh. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> Sanctified. <laughs> Set apart. <laughs> he was not giving them a prayer to pray verbatim. In fact, he later on he says, don't get into repetitious prayers. But what he is telling them, he says, listen, when you pray, the first thing you need to do is enter into the presence of Almighty God and separate his name from other ah, other names. Ah, yes. <coughs> Wouldn't be wouldn't be difficult to go down and write down some of the Hebrew names for God. Mm -hmm. Yahweh Shema, the Lord is here. Yah Yahweh Yahweh uh, Shalom, the Lord my peace. Mm -hmm. Yahweh Yiva, the Lord my provider. El Olam, the everlasting God. And pray those names and separate those names from the mundane. Those names are holy. Those names are precious. But why is that? Because he is holy. There is none like you. There is none like him. None like him. He is holy. Completely separate from everything else. We have to separate him from everything else. He is to be holy. His name is holy. His name is holy. We need to be careful how we use his name. His name is holy. Yes. We should watch how we use his name. He said, when you pray. So he's giving them a, a literal outline of prayer. He's telling them the attitude of prayer and the outline of prayer. But notice that you start off in his presence. Mm -hmm. You start off separating yourselves. Yes. <laughs> Getting into your closet. Mm -hmm. Closing the door, yes. going into the holy place, the yes. holy of holies, yes. going to the mercy seat. Mm. <laughs> That's where you start. Yes. That is not even in my notes. I haven't even started on point one yet. Uh, <laughs> Minister, sir. <laughs> but just like the Holy Spirit leads. So let's go on. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Now that meant something to the to an Israeli more than it does to us. Mm -hmm. When they heard the term daily bread, they immediately remembered the man. Mm -hmm. I, I know everybody says manna in Hebrew it's man. Mom. It's two letters, male noon. Mm. Mom. Mm. So water received. Mm. <laughs> he said, give us this day our daily manna. They they in other words remember what it was like in the desert. Mm. Remember what it was like in the, the mid bar. Here's the interesting thing about uh, Midbar. Midbar is the word for desert, but Midbar is in the desert. So Midbar is desert. Midbar is two, two Hebrew words, the mem and the bar. Mem is from or away from, like from. The bar is speech. So when you get into the desert, you get away from Mitzrayim, the bitterness, that's what Mitzrayim is, bitterness. And you go into the desert where you hear him speak. Mm. 
That's where you're hearing speak. When you're in the desert. The desert experience. He wants us to remember what it was like to hear his voice in the desert. He wants us to go back to, to Numbers and Deuteronomy and experience that all over again. Yes, yes. He wants us to experience that again. What it was like to travel and to be living in sukkahs, mm -hmm. a little tent, little built, mm -hmm. make sure, make sure. Covering, right. not even a tent, just to make shift sticks and sticks and, and leaves and stuff on top of it. A suka. A fruit all around. <laughs> all right, sir. I love it. He wants us to remember what it was like to look up into the stars and have no protection from anything except God. Just God is my protection. Look at look outside the sky. To be out there and, and be, be open to the uh, to the all the wild animals that are in the desert. And the only protection you had was God Almighty. He wants us to remember what it was like to only have him. Mm. When we didn't have houses, when we didn't have food that was stocked up for months in our cabinets. Oh yes. When we when we were living hand to mouth, when every day we didn't know whether there was going to be bread out there for us or not. He wants us to remember what it was like when we just depended upon him and him alone and did not depend upon ourselves for any single thing. My God. Give us our daily bread. Daily, daily. Now there's spiritual applications. I understand that about that about the scriptures, and I understand that. But I'm gonna tell you there's something else in there, and that, that has to do with with our, our understanding of where we came from. There was a time I was homeless, sleeping on a desk in the Kirby office just a couple of blocks from here. Mm -hmm. I find it interesting God bless me at home just two blocks from the Kirby office. <laughs> where I used to sleep. I had a constant reminder of where I came from. Amen. All right. I was homeless. I was starving. I was bones. You can ask my wife when I met her, I was bones. I was happy if I got a couple of bucks so I could go down to the the uh, uh, Wendy's. Wendy's and get chili chips and cheese. Mm -hmm. And then they had a bowl of chili yeah. and they put some Fritos in there and they put some cheese on top. It was a dollar. Mm -hmm. And you had to pay the tax. I think it ended up being a dollar five. There was days I didn't have a dollar five. Mm -hmm. And I went hungry that day, and I drank a lot of water, and I slept so that so that I would ignore the hunger pains. Yeah. It's true, true. Because I was proud. Been there, done that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was a proud man. Yeah. That I was going to make it on my own without God's help. Uh, uh, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> See, what most of you don't understand is that prior to that, I had been a minister for years. Mm -hmm. I've been, I, I started preaching when I was 12 years old. But I went through a divorce and a lot of different things went to happen in my life. And I want to tell you, I just, lost, I, I just lost it all. I lost all hope. I lost all, all, everything. Yeah. I didn't want to have anything to do with God. Okay. People would say, I'm praying for you. And I'd say, please don't pray. I don't want your prayers. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm going to make it on my own. I don't need God. Oh, yeah. Mm, that's chance. <laughs> and I went down and down and down until I was living so so low that I was actually sleeping on a desk in the Kirby office. And I got down on my knees one day and I said, I'm coming back to you, Lord. Welcome home. <laughs> and I started making my church journey back. Church is now called the River, but back then it was Riverside Tabernacle. The guy that I was working with was also a backslidden uh, Pentecostal preacher, 
and he wants to go to church, but he said, my dad goes to the, that church over there. He said, they're having a, they're having a, a fellowship this Saturday. He said, they're, they, they, they're going to have food out there. And I said, <laughs> he said, well, you said the magic word. <laughs> so I went over there to look for his dad, who later became my best man after I married R.J. When the food came by, I tried not to look too ravenous, but man, I could I could have sat in the middle of the table and just <laughs> poured it in. It's so 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 the next morning, I went, I went to the Riverside Tabernacle Church. I could care. I had no idea what Charles King, Pastor Charles King, preached that day. I, I had no idea what he preached. All I could I, all I could think of, I wanted to get to the altar. Mm -hmm. oh. Now, I already made my heart right back then, but I wanted to get to the altar. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to make a public announcement. Mm -hmm. I'm paying for him. I am changed in my life that day mm -hmm. like they never have ever before. That's really God wanted to. So I remember, I remember the days when I had nothing. Lord, put me back to that day. See, help me remember the time when I would sit in my trailer that I paid $1,200 for. It was just a piece of junk. It was basically four walls. Help me remember... Because right after I came out of the Lord, the opportunity started coming. But you know, I didn't get I didn't get riches all at once. All right, <laughs> and I struggled for a long time. But it was the best time of my life. Oh yeah! Because I would get up in the morning, I would pour me a little glass of grape juice, and I would break off some crackers that I had. And I'm happy to be here with God. Yes. And He was close to me like you have never, I've never imagined any closeness. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I had nothing. But now when I have everything, all of a sudden I have no time for him. Mm. Suddenly I got, I'm too busy with the yard. I'm too busy with the, with the doing things for my wife. I'm too busy with my job. I'm too busy here. I'm too busy. I don't have time for him. Oh my God. Remember, give me my daily bread. Take me back, Lord, yeah. to the time when I had nothing. Give me my tin and beef. Ha! Yes, oh God. Mm. My wife, I met her. She had just moved out of a basement apartment. She'd lived there for years. She was on Section 3 housing. Her and I they had nothing. <laughs> she had more, she had 10 times more than I did. I don't even know why she married me. It wasn't my looks, and it wasn't my money. I had no idea what I was. <laughs> For God put us together. Amen. God put us together. Yes, He did. He's good at that. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. This is where I wanted to go. Deliver us from evil. Yes. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So I want to talk about this phrase, deliver us, but I'm going to do it a little different this morning. I'm going to put a question mark after the phrase. Deliver us. I want you to think about that a little differently today. Not as a request, but as a question. Deliver us. Deliver us, but not now. Deliver us, not totally. Deliver us, and not too much, Lord. Don't deliver me too much. <laughs> 
Lord, deliver us, but not too specific. <laughs> Lord, deliver us, but deliver us in my own way. That's not, that's not how he works. <laughs> now, there are a lot of other petitions here. We have to give us our daily bread. We have to give us our, our trespasses. We have to lead us, right? Yeah. But deliver us. I mean, can we really ask that? Can mm -hmm. we really ask that? Yeah, Deliverance is mentioned over 400 times in the Bible. Mm. So I want to ask you this question. Is there anybody in this community that needs deliverance? <laughs> Go to the broken and breaking homes and ask them if they need deliverance. Mm -hmm. Go to the breaking and broken hearts and ask them if they need deliverance. Almost the best means. Go to the jails and the bars. Those people that would have broken and breaking dreams. I'm thinking about it right now. And ask them if they want deliverance. Lost loved ones. Go to your job. The marketplace. Go to the schools. And just ask them. Do you want deliverance? How about we go to America's 12 to 15 million alcoholics? Mm -hmm. And ask their frustrated families. Do you need deliverance? Ask on the highways. There are those in the north that are going south. Those in the south are going north. And then when they pack up their burdens mm -hmm. and they come back home. Ask the quarter of a million people who attempt suicide. Yeah. Yeah. Those that attempted deliverance at their own hands. They wanted deliverance so bad, they're willing to go to the extent of taking their own lives. Mm -hmm. That's how bad they need deliverance. In fact, the need for the delivering power of God has never been greater than today. Mm -hmm. Never before has the need been greater for the church to, to fulfill the Great Commission. Amen, sir. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Paul wrote in the first chapter of Romans, he wrote this, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Has anybody been delivered today? <laughs> mm -hmm. Or was this only in the Bible times? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I tell you, many of you here, probably every one of you, could share your own story of deliverance. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. You've been delivered from sin. Many of you are delivered from sickness. You're delivered from calamity. You're delivered from storms. Delivered from fails, delivered from tornadoes, delivered from religiosity, delivered from emptiness, delivered from cares of life, delivered from the business jungle. Amen. Yeah. But do we need to be delivered from everything? The caterpillar makes a cocoon. Mm -hmm. And out of that cocoon, with Great struggle great comes a butterfly. Great, great struggle. If you try to help that butterfly along, it be the worst thing you ever did yes. mm -hmm. to that butterfly.
You don't need to be delivered from everything. Some struggle is good for you. Mm -hmm. You got that right. Yeah. Wrestling with God is good for you. Don't say that word. Struggling with Him is good for you. Getting in prayer and struggling with God over your situation. Mm -hmm. And praying with Him and talking with Him is good for you. I mean, I said that way time. Because you're getting stronger. And you're getting stronger. And you're getting strong. Mm -hmm. There's a saying, what doesn't kill you makes you strong, right? <laughs> some strong, some, we don't need to be delivered from everything. When a baby is born, even the birth is difficult enough, right? <laughs> So when the baby is born, the baby begins to crawl, and then he moves from crawling to walking, he learns to tie his shoes, he learns to ride a bike, he goes to school, all through struggle. All through struggle. <coughs> So we shouldn't be delivered from everything. What, what, should we be delivered from dirt without sweeping? Some housewives would love that. <laughs> what about delivered from debt without discipline? Oh, now, now, big picture, you went, you stopped preaching and you went to meddling. <laughs> We all want our debts taken care of. We all want them paid, but we don't want to be disciplined in our lives, in our financial dealings. And so, you know, but we want God to somehow magically erase our debts. Okay. Yeah. But He'll do it through discipline. He'll help you, but he especially to be disciplined. What about delivered from your doubts? Mm. Without doubting your doubts. <clears throat> you know, in the past we've had the Reformation. So we've had social and racial slavery. That's all deliverance. Reformation delivered us from the clutches of the Roman Catholic Church. Mm. The power of, of that of that organization was unbelievable. They held your life, they lived your life in their hands. Literally, they held the power of life and death of yes. And the Reformation broke that. Thank God for that. Amen. Mm -hmm. That was the beginning of where we are of, of returning, but we did we got a long ways to go yet. What about the Jewish people themselves? God delivers them over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. One of the Palestinian newspapers several years ago put this on the headlines. Their God stops our bombs. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's on the papers. It was several years ago. Even they understood, they understood that there was a power behind something that they didn't understand. Why did they have to throw, spend, spend 3,500 bombs over there and, and do very little damage? And yet, when the Jewish people move in, they can pinpoint things and they can destroy buildings and not knock them down and, and not, not hurt any civilians in the process. So, at least, uh, at least warn them that so they are able to get out of the way. Yeah. God fights their battles, God works with them, mm -hmm. God delivers them. They were delivered from the Holocaust, mm -hmm. but they struggled because they were delivered. Big time. But what about those that are not delivered? During one of the world wars, we had Dunkirk. I believe it was World War II. Yes. Dunkirk. Yes. Dunkirk. 
There were hundreds of thousands of British soldiers. Hundreds of thousands of British soldiers. They were trapped just across the English Channel. Mm-hmm. Yep. Churchill said that it would be a miracle if oh, yeah. 90,000 were delivered. Oh, my God. <laughs> mm-hmm. The Mosquito Armada mm-hmm. delivered 338,000. <laughs> the miracle of the war. Right? They were delivered from their number. Yeah, mm-hmm. serious. But what about the thousands that were not delivered? Are anybody delivered from death? Absolutely. But the death rate among faith healers is 100%. Mm-hmm. So are we always delivered from death? Not always. Mm-hmm. No. Are we delivered from all discouragement? Mm-hmm. All darkness, mm-hmm. all desire, mm-hmm. all doubts. I know there are preachers that would love you, love you to think that you're going to be delivered from all those things, but listen, you're not going to be delivered from all of them. Amen, sir. The number one requirement for the promised land was that deliverance was gradual. He said, I will not destroy these nations before you, but we'll do it little by little. Their deliverance was gradual. And I'm telling you that if you want to be delivered today, it starts today, but it's gradual. Somebody said, I thought you were graduated from Rama. I thought you were a big man. I certainly am. I believe in I believe in in in, in faith. I believe in, in teaching about faith, but I also believe that that we have to give people the realization that not everything's going to happen mm-hmm. quick, fast, and in a hurry. Mm-hmm. My wife and I have come a long ways from those days. Mm-hmm. Twenty-one years ago. Well, mm-hmm. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. And I'm happy where we're at. Mm-hmm. I never forget where we came from. Mm. Can't do that. Uh, too much. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of different circumstances and there are a lot of different methods that the Bible records of personal deliverances. You had John from the Isle of Patmos. He was exiled, right? But he was free of spirit. Mm-hmm. While he was in the Isle of Patmos, isolated, his spirit was free. He says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. You might imprison my body, but you can't imprison my spirit. All right. And I will rise up above this so solitude, and I will get into the presence of Almighty God. <laughs> and when he did that, the revelation, the apocalypse, the revelation of Jesus Christ was given to him. <laughs> And he saw visions. And he recorded them for the ends of time, for you and I. Hmm. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. And that's where we're living. Yes, sir. Paul and Silas was delivered by, by an earthquake. The three Hebrew children by the fourth man in the park. During the Babylonian period of captivity, they had hung their hearts on the willows because they could not sing the Lord's song in a strange land. But yet God delivered them. And their despondency and their, and their dis- discouragement, still God delivered them. Naaman delivered by seven gifts in the money Jordan. 
Noah built his own boat. <laughs> yes. Yes, my brother. But there are principles that we need for deliverance. The first one is the principle of responsibility. Do you want to be delivered today? You have to take personal responsibility for where you're at. The devil did not make you do it. <laughs> Now he helped you along. But I want to tell you something. He has no power in your life. Amen. He only has the power that you have allowed him to have. When you tell him that you no longer want that power, he must leave you alone. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. You take the responsibility and you make that choice. Amen. Because if you don't, you might be delivered for a moment, mm -hmm. but he'll come back. Amen. 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 Jesus said, when the evil spirit are gone out of a man, they, the, they, 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 they come back and they find out that, they, that, that it's, it's yeah. been pretty much vacant, yeah. pretty much welcoming, welcoming for them, and they bring seven more. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. they do. Mm -hmm. So without responsibility, without you making the decision for responsibility, the worst thing you can do is get delivered. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you won't take the steps that are needed to make sure you're not the, that you're not attracting that again. That's good. Okay. See, I got delivered from where I was living and being homeless. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I don't want to go back there. <laughs> and so I've placed within my life certain responsibilities that keep me from going back. Mm -hmm. I know what caused it to go there, so I stay away from those things that caused me to get there, so I don't go there again. That's called personal responsibility. And I can't give that to you. You have to pull that up out of your own self. Amen. Yes, sir. You have to have reason. You have to have a mind that is able to reason it out and figure out how you got here. And how you're going to get back to the Lord so he can help you out. Mm -hmm. Second thing you have to do is you have to be able to resist. You have to be able to resist the temptation to get back into the old type of lifestyle. Third of all, you have to pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. I want to tell you something. I can't overemphasize that. Mm -mm. Nope. I can't over, cannot overemphasize the need for you to talk to the Lord, not just for an hour a day, but for every hour of the day. Amen. That's good, David. That you and the Lord get a dialogue where it doesn't matter where you're at, what you're doing, where you're at, you're able to communicate with him at any time, at any place, for any reason. Mm -hmm. You may be walking along, see a flower, and go, Thank you, God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is a beautiful flower you created. I just want to give you praise. <laughs> if you want to look at some beautiful flowers, just go over to Sister Renee's home. She's got some beautiful. Flowers out there as well. She's really the bigger job. Other <laughs> people have flowers too, and I don't want to discount that, but you know, they're out there. Just talk to him about your everyday life. Talk to him about your car. 
Yeah. Talk to him about your yard. Talk to him about your rake. Talk to him about your lawnmower. Talk to him about everything. Amen. Talk to him about your wife. Talk to him about your husband. Talk to him about the chair you're sitting in. Talk to him about, about the air that you breathe. Talk to him. Just talk to him. Not for an hour a day. See, we want to compartmentalize prayer. Mm -hmm. Well, we have this little prayer time over here, and the rest of the day is ours. Yes. No. Well, we'll work over it. Mm -mm. Prayer is should be like breathing. Mm -hmm. It's a lifestyle. Every hour of the day is prayer time. Amen. It becomes a lifestyle. The fourth thing. The fourth thing is you have to trust and obey. Yeah. Trust and obey. God and for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus on earth. But to trust and obey. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Trust and obey. Mm -hmm. Trust and the not. Have faith in God. Emma, faith, trust. All relationship is based on trust. If you're going to have a relationship, he has to trust you. Yes. And yes, you yes, yes, have to trust him. Yes, yes. You trust him implicitly with everything. You trust him with every decision you make. Yes. You trust him with everything you do. You trust him. He tells you to do something, even if it doesn't sound really good, you do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Trust and obey. Obey instantaneously. Obey without question. Obey without pause. Obey. The Lord says, go speak to that person. You walk over there and you start speaking to them. You don't know what you're going to say. You just walk over there and, and just start speaking to them. Hi, how are you doing? I'm just over here because the Lord told me to come over here and see you. Don't know why, but I'm here. And just let the Lord you know, give you some words to say. Trust and obey. And he will. And what you'll see is the things that were holding you back, the things you need deliverance from, become less and less important in your life. <laughs> and you're no longer bothered by them anymore. Yes. All the stories in the Word of God about people like us, they're there for a reason. Because every one of them did one thing. When the Lord told them to do this, they obeyed. Yes. And that's why their stories are there. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to I'm going to leave you with this. God is in the delivered business. Mm -hmm. He said at the tomb of Lazarus, when Lazarus came out of the tomb, he was wrapped with grave clothes. You see, many people are born again, but they still got the great clothes on. Mm -hmm. They're still wrapped. Their head is wrapped, their body's wrapped, and they're walking like this, shuffling along, barely getting along spiritually, because they are encompassed with some kind of demonic hindering spirit. Oh, yeah. And Jesus said, loose him <laughs> and let him go. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We are sent to loose people. Yes. We are sent to loose them from the bondages of Satan. Get out of your mind this all the deliverance place the, uh, the things in Pentecost where they were wrestling down the ground this the devil's not that, that, that big of an enemy <laughs> you tell him to leave he has to leave yes. if he don't leave you just stand your ground yeah, you yeah, say, I'll tell you I said leave I'm not kidding 
if you don't leave, because I'm standing here in the power of Yeshua from Mashiach. I'm standing here in Jesus, the Nazarene, the Jesus, the Nazarite. The, the branch. The branch. And I'm here as his ambassador. He gave me, he gave me authority over you. Yes. Amen. And you have no right to do it. And you don't have to get loud. You don't have to scream. You don't have to shout. Amen. You can just tell him, get out. Just get out. He has to leave. He might, ch he might challenge you a little bit, but he ain't going to challenge you much. Because mm -hmm. greater is he that is in you mm -hmm. than he that is in the world. Yeah, there's no authority. Besides, you're not dealing with the devil anyway. You're dealing with the one that's the lamps. That's even, that's right. even less. Mm -hmm. But even if what you were dealing with Hasatan himself, be no challenge. Mm -hmm. Not a challenge whatsoever. It's not a challenge. It's not a fight. It's not a struggle. Just leave. Does a police officer officer have to struggle with you? You know, no. You you, you, you pull over, right? Amen. You don't look for it, Father, for your help. The Bible says that the great task of Jesus was to deliver the captives. And set at liberty and then that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Yes, sir. To deliver the captives. That's our job as the body of each other. To deliver the captives. Stop trying to win people over with your theology. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you give them the delivering power of the Holy Spirit in their life that delivers them from whatever it is that, that, that they're that they're going through at that moment. I want to tell you something. They will listen to your theology then. Yes. It is the power of God that we need, not the knowledge of God. Amen. I've spent weeks here talking to you about how we know God, how we do great exploits, mm -hmm. and that's fine for us. Right. Because it, now as we know whose we are, now we have to go out there and take charge of what God has given us to do. The set of liberty then that are To deliver them. Loosen and letting go. Every one of you have that power. Every one of you. Sorry. There are hurting people out there right now Amen. that are waiting for you to All come over. by today. All over. They're waiting for you to come by today. Look on the right, look on the left, look up. And you have the hope of glory inside of you. Let's all stand. Just ever a head down, never had a close. Father, I know that right here in this congregation there are people that need deliverance in their lives. They didn't come here by accident. God, I'm going to take authority over the demonic powers that have come up against them in their lives. And by the power of the Holy Spirit and through the authority of Jesus, I command the devil to leave these people alone. No more sickness. No more disease. Right. No more lack. No more distress. No more headaches, no more pain, no more discouragement, nothing. And everything be completely loose and set free. 
In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, the branch, the Netzer, HaNetzer, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the branch. In the Jesus' name, we break every satanic hold. In the name of Jesus. And we set these people free. Father, now we just glorify you and magnify your name. Yes, we do. For what you have done and what you are doing. And what you will continue to do in our lives. Now God, send us, oh God, Lord, send us as a liberated people to liberate others. To set them free. To break the bonds of wickedness over their lives. And to bring peace and harmony into this world today. Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. In Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. 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 So now we're going to do the priestly blessing. I know we have a visitor here, so I just want to take just a moment to talk about the priestly blessing, what it does. He said when the priest would pray this blessing, that he would put his name upon you, his character upon you. He wants you to be like him. He would put his character upon you. He said that when you say these words, I, that's himself, will bless you. He will bless you. He will put things on you. And if you will receive it today, you can have that. He will do that. I'll do it in Hebrew first, and I'll do it in English so you know what the words were. But I'll do it in Hebrew because there are 70 Hebrew letters, and they, they correspond with the 70, uh, the 70 warriors that were around Solomon's bed. And so we're releasing 70 angels to go with you today. So that's why I do it in Hebrew first, and then we'll do it in English. Yiverachika, Yahweh, Yishmerachika, Yair, Yahweh, Panah, Melechah, Vikanachah, Yisai, Yahweh, Panah, Melechah, Vyasein, the Kasherol. The Lord will bless you and he will keep you. The Lord will make his face to shine upon you and he will be gracious to you. The Lord will lift his countenance upon you and he will give you peace. His favor will be upon you. And a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, and their children, and their children, his presence will go before you. He will be behind you. He will be beside you. He will be all around you. He will be within you. He is with you. He is with you in the morning. He's with you in the evening. He's with you in your coming. He's with you in your going. He's with you in your weeping. He's with you in your rejoicing. He is for you. He is for you. Amen. Amen. Amen.